So, John, what kind of game would you like to play right now? Play Texas Hold'em. Come on, it's fun. Yeah. We'll no limit Texas Hold'em? Texas Hold'em, no, no limits. I'll tell you what we can do. Put $500 in for the ante first. All right. So what's the difference between a regular album and an acoustic album? Oh, um, the other one's louder. <laughs> this is a lot more intimate. It's not an acoustic record. It's, a, it's an eclectic record. I think at the, at the outset, it was meant to be an acoustic record as we've been credited with starting the unplugged idea. But it turned into complete rearrangements of the songs with different instrumentation. A way of presenting a greatest hits in a new form. So it's more of an eclectic presentation. Okay, you want to call? So I can put another thousand One calls. One thousand calls. Calls it. All right, you ready? We're all in. What we're going to do is impossible. Here we go. The producer's name is Patrick. Was he involved in a project? Yeah, Pat Leonard um, is best known for his work with Madonna and Elton, Brian Adams, Brian Ferry. Um, we en enlisted his help during the course of the project really to complete a body of work. Unbeknownst to us, when he did come in and get involved, we started the whole project over again. He was a, a real valuable asset to how the whole record turned out. Great producer. All right, guys, this is the last card, okay? This will be the last betting round. It's up to you, David. Drek. Glad my career is a lot more successful yeah, in my card game. I'm out. How about two grand? <laughs> Probably got like four somethings. I'm into that two and right. Ooh, oh, two, more. two more to you there. So when you were making the, the album in the studio, what kind of vibes did you have in the studio? So I like Texas Hold'em. <laughs> you didn't know what was coming next. That's the magic of it. It was so wonderful to let go of what was for the sake of what will be. And we challenged ourselves to um, not just present our fan base with the existing hits as they were, um, which is very typical of the uh, record business. Christmas time, people put out greatest hits and stick a new song on it. And uh, we reinvented these songs, and I think the greatest compliment that Richie's been saying all along that makes the most sense is that we've uh, we broke them down to, to what the core of their being were, which were great songs. And no matter how you re-present them, um, they take on a whole new life now, and people are reacting to that. Richie, can I see your cards? A pair of aces and a pair of jacks. Yow! Yow! Not to be I like when they stand up and they do this. <laughs> <laughs> so with all those changes, what was the biggest surprise? Well, what, the biggest surprise is that they're actually putting are? 2,000 in, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay. I think every song was a surprise, were. they're all retooled. It's just pretty amazing after doing the songs for so many years and so many times that they're completely different and they live in that new light. I think that what we've done that's um, differentiated us from a lot of our peers is uh, the constant reinvention throughout the years and the flexibility that we've shown. Um, we sort of, by accident, created what is now called Unplugged. We were doing an MTV show in 1989, and uh, if you can imagine, the front row was Madonna and Bob Seger and David Lee Roth and all our, our peers. And to get any of those other artists to stand up and stand on their seats and cheer and yell and you're on MTV, and it's gonna be very difficult to do. And we're not a production style band that's gonna do something like Madonna in the big dresses, you know, when she comes out on the MTV award. So, um, what we did is we went to um, the award show and set out with two acoustic guitars and just Richie and okay. I went out there barefoot, literally barefoot, okay. and played Living on a Prayer <laughs> and Wanted Dead or Alive for the ushers. Ed said, you pick it. 
And uh, Dick Clark, who was producing the show, said, do both of them. It sounds so great. So we did. It sort of went over okay. We left, thought that the night was done. But um, the next day in the papers, that's all anyone was talking about on the news broadcast. That's all they were talking about. MTV started a, a series then called Unplugged, and a lot of people had a lot more success doing a lot more with the format than we uh, set out to do. But because of that, and because of uh, albums like Crush, the evolution of the band over the last 20 years has been something that's kept us uh, not only alive, but thriving. And that's why we're still here. Did you discover anything new about your old songs? 500 bucks? Yeah, I'm in for that. How much? 500? 500. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, the fact that you did all, all the songs that we've done in the past in a certain way and be able to let your hair down and, and kind of enjoy it in a whole different spectrum as far as rhythms and melodies and polyrhythms and reinvent the songs. It made the whole, the whole thing probably a pleasure to do, and that's why I think it went so quickly as well. Rich. What are you Here we go. whatever you want to bet. 500 to UT. So after completing these new songs, what was your first reaction? I raised a 500. I felt that uh, I didn't care about how it did commercially. I thought artistically it was uh, a great accomplishment. And we're not working the record. We're not doing press. We're not doing the TV shows. We're not touring it. 